I was just reading the Pantone fashion color trend report for the spring and I thought to myself, I still have a few winter color blanks that need to be used for something. So since green is in the color palette, I'm about to take this forest green, use it for one of my new 2024 designs, and I'm gonna get my small business ready for the spring. Now, this design was inspired by the thought that going forward in 2024, you gotta have an invite to attend the event that I call my life. So don't think that you automatically invited to the function. The front design on the shirt reads, this chapter of my life is by invite only, and the sleeve decoration is gonna put them on notice. You need to RSVP ASAP, and no, you don't get a plus one. <laughs> so I had a few people ask me about the neck tags they saw in my other videos. Now, I design my own neck tags in Canva. Then I add them to the gang sheet layout at the same time as my other designs for when I'm getting my DTF transfers printed. I like custom neck tags because they let me brand my designs and it's not as in your face as a logo on the outside of the shirt. Here's an example of one of my printed gang sheets and if you look on the side, those are the tags that I designed added on. Next, I have my t-shirt ruler to help center and line up my transfer. I also have my heat press pad, my heat tape, and scissors. These are my two arm transfers, the oversized chest transfer, and last but not least, my branded neck tag. Now, I want to press the neck tag first, so I have to remove the tearaway label, then I'm going to turn the shirt inside out. Then I insert the heat pad into the neck of the shirt to give it some lift so that the seam around the collar doesn't interfere with pressing the transfer down evenly. I also like to make a small fold at the middle of the neck tag design, just on the transfer paper itself. And what that does is help me center the tag without having to use my t-shirt guide. Then I'm gonna press it for 15 seconds remove the transfer paper, and press it down a few seconds more to seal the design into the fabric. All right, so before I can press the design, I have to figure out my placement. Now this shirt has an oversized chest design and the heat press that I have has a 15 by 15 inch pressing area. And that's actually quite large. Um, most standard designs are anywhere from nine to 12 inches wide and about three to 12 inches high. So I do have more than enough pressing area to apply this transfer in one press. But when you start decorating things like the full arms of the garments or full legs of leggings and joggers, I recommend considering an upgrade to a larger press. Something like a 16 by 20 inch, which is something I do have on my wish list. Reason being, again, a press that large is going to give you the cleanest, most accurate application since you can press the whole design at one time. But we're taking baby steps. For now, my 15 by 15 inch is just fine. Another thing that makes this a little bit challenging is because I'm also dealing with a bulky garment. So I have to make sure that my placement is very precise. Like when I line it up on the bottom of the heat press, I have to make sure the entire platform is underneath supporting the shirt. That way, when I bring the platen down, the whole transfer is covered. So here you see me getting some heat tape. Now this tape in particular has never left any residue on my garments. I've used it on 100% cotton, 80-20 and 50-50 cotton poly blends, cotton and spandex blends, and there's no residue. So here I'm taking a little piece of tape to place a marker so I can figure out where I want the lettering on the transfer to be placed. And here I'm just using my t-shirt guide and lining everything up. Now this part of the process takes the longest, at least for me. 
mainly because I'm making sure that my samples are very accurate so that I can take measurements later and keep notes of the final placements. That way, when I'm making this design in the future, I have all the information I need to produce a consistent design when I'm pressing them in volume. Here, I'm just checking around the edges of the design to make sure that it's completely on the bottom platform. So when I bring the platen down, everything is covered and pressed with even pressure. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite part. The peeling, yeah, it's so satisfying. But this thing is hot. That's why I'm peeling from different corners. I always do a second press to seal the design into the garment. Do y'all see that steam coming off? <laughs> it's hot, okay? <laughs> 320 degrees hot. And y'all, this design, it blends seamlessly. It doesn't feel stiff or plasticky. It's just slightly textured compared to the texture of the shirt, which I love. Now onto the sleeves. I thought it would actually end up needing the heat press pad, but when I realized where I was placing the design, I didn't end up using it because the seam wasn't underneath the design. So now I just have to figure out the placement. I ended up going two inches away from the seam by the cuff of the sleeve, and I centered and lined up the design from there. Then I did the same to the other side. Now you do see me compare the two sleeves and I double check the placement near the top and the bottom. This again is just to make sure that everything is even and lined up when you're looking at the shirt as a whole. Now just be aware, this placement that I'm doing, it's not a universal standard or anything. It will vary depending on the design and the look that you want to achieve, but I just thought I'd share it so you can compare it with the final design. And because I was planning to do a quick photo shoot, I did end up soft pressing the shirt to get any wrinkles out. So 
So here's the shirt listed on my website and I actually separated the listings and I think I'm gonna keep doing this going forward. So I have the spring color palette listing and my spring neutral palette listing. And I plan on making samples of a few more of these colors, um, particularly the navy, the pink, the white, and the sand. And you know what? I I'll probably just end up doing all the colors. I really love this design. <laughs> And here's the sample that I made in this video from my quick photo shoot. If you want to follow more of the journey of how I'm building my clothing brand, check out this next video and I'll see you there.